Okie doke. So we are here on my desktop and we're about to go and open up our um, Photoshop. Now, what I like, sometimes I notice that when you're using Photoshop and you try to open up a 3D garment inside of it, it'll open it up as a 2D or it'll say you're opening the wrong type of document. I found that if you open it up externally, like just clicking on it and letting Photoshop open up itself, um, you don't run into that error as often. So that's what I like to do. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So just waiting for Photoshop to load up. I'm using CS5 Extended. And it's my favorite. I wouldn't choose any other. Alright. So our t-shirt comes in. And we learned this trick when we were working with the Maitreya body. So I'll talk about this later. So when it comes in, we got to teach you the basic controls of it. So you know how to manipulate and move it around and rotate it and all that fun jazz. Because you're tempted to just, like, alright, let's move it, let's use the 2D tools. I already know how to use Photoshop. But if you use that, you'll break your uh, modeling space. So what I want to do is, may have you look at this right here at the bottom of your uh, toolbar. And you'll see a little orb with a ring around it. These are your 3D tools. So you would just click that. And you can see you're able to move and orbit around your garment the way you want to. Uh, you can use the roll, which allows you to move it around to the side. Um, let's see. You're not going to use anything else really those two. If you want to zoom in, you would have to use the camera tool. And then scroll down to where you see the zoom in camera tool. And that allows you to, you know, zoom in and out of your garment. If you use the magnifying glass, it's just going to make the, uh, the area bigger. It's not going to, the workspace bigger. It's not going to zoom it in at all so you may want to change that I want to fit this back to the screen and uh, those are the tools you're pretty much going to use them now it does have set settings so you can switch the face to it so it like left right uh, bottom and front so if you get stuck you can always just use those and switch it about so that's pretty much all you need to know on how to navigate now we get to go to the fun part and actually texture it um, I want you to turn your attention over to your layers panel. And if you don't have it, if it looks different from mine, you can just reset it. So you can just press design, then painting, and that allows you to have it all set up by you know default. So it should look like mine now. So you want to go over to where your layers are, and you want to double click on where it says diffuse, and then check that. And you should have your... Um, shape maps in here by default if they're not you can just drag them in or you know go to your desktop where you save it in and just drag it in and then check the little check box and it will be inside there but mine's came in by default so I don't need the default one um, if your texture stuff isn't set like your work size let me see what I'm trying to say is we want to make sure that our workspace is at the right size so I want to go to image and an image size and make sure that it's 2048 by 2048 if it is then everything's fine if not make sure you just change height and width to 2048 by 2048 and hit OK so this is what your workspace should look like what we're going to do is go over to our layers again and we're going to create a new layer on top of it and I like to say at this point is where you decide what color you want your shirt it's a lot easier than going into the 3D window and trying to paint on the color that you want so um, just pick the color of shirt that you want. I think maybe this magenta rose color is good. And I pick the paint bucket and I just click onto it and then that's that. And we're going to go to the blending option. Right now it's at the normal. I usually set mine to multiply so it's here. You can really just scan through it and see which one looks the best to the color that you want. It's one of the fun parts of making shirts. Um, I don't know, it looks kind of dirty, don't you think? I'm going to take my shadow map and I'm going to blur it a little bit so it doesn't look as dirty. Just blurry. To how I see stuff in real life. <laughs> Alright, it's about that. Maybe black. Alright, I like black t-shirts. That's usually what I wear in, in... Whoops. Usually what I wear. So I'm going to make this black then. Yeah, black works. Yay. So we have our base color. And you can name your layers by double clicking on there. I, I frankly don't care. Um, and then we're going to create a new layer on top of. This is where we're going to draw our uh, um, draw on our shirt. 
I'm going to put some shading on it first. So this is going to be our shade layer. And I know by just experience that multiply works the best. So I'm just going to create a new layer, make it blank, and put it on multiply. Then I'm going to close this. And it's going to ask us if you want to save any changes. And you're going to say yes. So I have my shirt here. It's loaded in. And um, I like the way the shading on this is. But I can try to add more to it just because um, it's what I'm used to doing. I used to do the stuff with old school second life. So um, what I want to do is I want to exaggerate the shading on here. So I'm grabbing my trusty graphics tablet. You can use a mouse if you want, but tablet's where to go. And I'm going to grab a like slightly shader, lighter shade of black. And I'm just going to draw in here where I want things to be shaded at. You can follow the curves of this shirt. Or you can just go by what you know. So it's going to be that there. And you want to make sure you turn it and get it cover everything. You can cheat and actually follow the generated shadows that uh, Photoshop gives you. But you want to be careful because you don't want to um, under shadow or over shadow or shade too much. Like uh you want to cover everything properly you don't want to accidentally go like this and then give yourself a weird half boob or something so you want to make sure everything's shaded right so I like to exaggerate that and do the same thing on the side going up the bust like so and underneath it shading all around here down here up here and under the armpit now you got to be careful under the armpit because one you may hit a seam line and that's one and the other is if you make it too dark and don't shade it properly like blend it right you could just make your avatar look like they got sweaty pits unless that's what you're going for but in the most case nobody wants to have sweaty pits unless it's like a sports day kind of thing and like we've been training all day our pits are sweaty something like that so I want to put a curve under here and uh, maybe pretend like the boobs are poking through so I put a circle here half circle here and half circle there <laughs> all right so we got some of that in there this you may look at this and I'm like ew uh, what are you going for here? But just wait. This is part of the magic. I'm going to shade underneath there because I know that there's normally a seam line around the sleeves around here. Something here. I feel like, you know, I want to be like Bob Ross. Just put in some happy shading there. There are no wrong ways of doing this. Anyway, it's fine. Just happy shading. Happy wrinkles. Happy little wrinkles. <laughs> Alright, so now we have our happy shading in there and happy wrinkles. Everything done right. We're going to do a massive blur. So double click on our layer again. Draw on there if you feel like it. Uh, so we have that. This. We're going to go to File, Filter, Blur, and this Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to get in there real deep like this. And while I'm here, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to hit Multiply again. And go back to the front. You see it shaded in. So now it looks a lot better. And I'm going to use my yield wrinkle brushes um, which one is for boobs I think it's 123 let's turn this up uh, man I think it needs to be a little bit more and I just put it right here so I have a sh wrinkle right there And I got one for the back as well. So 
so it's wrinkly in the back as well and you can do it under that one under here as well too I think and maybe right here along that seam line I can and this is like old school second life clothes making everybody's clothes are wrinkles for days if the more wrinkles your shirts and stuff had the the better quality it was the more realistic it was i think maybe this too nobody had straight clothes straight ironed clothes were for poor people couldn't afford iron packs all right so now we have my shirt so what you call it and I think at this point you can draw in a collar if you want to sometimes I used to cheat and then just throw it up like that <laughs> and then put a fake collar here this was my way of cheating and making it look good I never really realized that did it work on the back yeah see give you a fake collar so now we have our shirt and it's all textured and shaded so um, with a few clicks mind you so now we have that all done Let's go over and add a decal to the shirt. So I'm going to press a new layer. And uh, I'm not going to change it to multiply just yet. I'm going to just create a new layer. And I'm going to close this and I'm going to hit yes. Hang on one second. Beat it, Suki. I'm trying to work. Sorry, my cat is like tapping me. He like, come on, play with me. Okay, so now let's say you have your shirt and it's all here and it's all shaded to heaven. And you want to add on like a, a picture or some words and stuff like that. Well, let's add in a picture first because that's always the best, the more enjoyable part. So I'm going to look on my desktop because I know I had a picture for this. And there we go. That's the picture I want. And you're just going to resize it down to where it is on the, where you want it on a shirt. It's like right here. I'm just going to hit place file so I can be able to zoom in. make this a little bit bigger all right so i got my shirt decal i'm gonna use the free transform and you can make it as put it where you want to so put it like right here yeah okay so this is where i want the shirt so what i'm gonna do is click on the paintbrush tool and i'm gonna click on the picture and it's gonna get oh I thought I turned it down. I must have turned it back up when I was jamming. <laughs> Alright, and you're just going to give you this error, and you're just going to say OK. And then you're going to right click on that layer, and then press Merge Down. And then, it should, there you go, pops onto a shirt. So you rotate it, it's like on there the way it should be. So you have your shirt decal. So I'm going to double click on this, and I'm going to create a new uh, layer and we're gonna go back here hit yes I'm gonna turn this down real quick so then break my ears when it errors again and if you want to add text the same process is there just click your text bar and uh, wait for it to load for a second come on text there we go so you get your text bar and you can write whatever you want in here. Mm. Double click on the text bar here. There we go. Suki, beat it. I'm working. Sorry, cat. I don't know why everything is like giving me so much trouble today. Alright, so I'm going to just create a new text bar. Yeah, that's better. And you can write whatever you want in here. Uh, you can change the color up here. Um, you can change the way it bends by using this T with the bend. And you could just arc it and move it like this or distort it. Just have fun. Make it text, whatever, however you want it. And then we're going to press the paintbrush again. Click on it. It's going to give us the error. We're going to say OK. And then your text becomes like a picture now. So you can use the free transform and place it wherever, however you want. Press the text again and hit apply. And then um, 
I'm gonna get rid of this one because we don't need this anymore. Then we're gonna press merge down. And you see it gets added to the shirt once it's finished rendering. So now you have your font and your, your text. And that's how you texture your shirts and stuff in 3D. Now I don't want whatever you want. I actually think I might wear that shirt later on. So I'm just going to take that layer off. And now we have it, we can go and we can save it. So but first, before we save it, we're going to shrink it down, image size, to 512 by 512. Now, the reason why we did this at 512 by 512, I know you're thinking, no, 1024 by 1024, is that I found out at the going to those creation meetings that the reason why people have a hard time, like, lag, what a lag and stuff like that is because of the textures of, of all things. Um, it's extra stuff for Second Life to load. The bigger the texture, the longer it takes to load. The smaller the texture, the smaller it's to load. So, making a really big, high-resolution texture, then shrinking it down to 512, you still get the same effect as you would with a big texture, except for it loads a lot faster. So, not only are you making your clothes, like, more pretty, you're making it easier for people to render around you. So, we're just going to hit File and Save, and save it as a JPEG, because there's no transparency in it. Um, another thing is, well, you can also look at the data well forget that I was gonna say look at the data when we were changing it down you saw how big the texture was it was like 120 something 12 megs and now it's like 700 something kilobytes progress my friend anyway um so we have it saved and exported out our texture see we have it here and I'm gonna pause it real quick and go in the blender and we're gonna export our shirt and apply our texture to it and then that should be the end of it so I'll see you in the last part of our text tutorial and yeah, we're almost done.